Hello again. We're doing exponential decay this time, and let me just get right to it. The decay model is y equals a times the quantity 1 minus r to the power of t, where a is the initial amount, r is the rate, 1 minus r is the decay factor, and t is the time period that we're working with. And there's several examples you can use. You can use medicinal examples. You can use many examples. But the most popular type of example that seems to be practical for a uh, person that's probably taken the math class, the majority of them are in high school or some form of schooling, is dealing with cars. And I like using this example, and then maybe I get a little cynical in nature about talking about cars, because it is a huge investment, second biggest financial investment besides a property that you particularly plan on living in, at least the general population, unless you've got money and many investments, then it's not. But that said, so you buy a beautiful car for $20,000. The rate of decay is 50%. Actually, it would be depreciation, not decay, is 50%. That means every year your car is going to be worth 50% less than it was the year before, which is quite terrible. Uh, and that's every year for five years. How much is it going to be worth after five maintenance, years? Maintenance, please go to the dock area. Maintenance, please go to the dock. Pardon me. So how much is it going to be worth after five years? And something to consider is this. You know, you go to a car dealership and... Uh, if you're a teenager buying it and you go by yourself, the, the old saying is there's a sucker born every minute. It's really that simple. If you're not experienced in buying cars, take somebody who's older than, uh, who's older than you with you and somebody who's experienced and somebody who's good at haggling. And, you know, and of course, you'll always say, what can I do to uh, put you in a new car? Or you've clearly done your research. Well, don't tell me I've done my research and don't tell me about you know, what I need to do to get into a new car. Don't ask me about whether I have a trade-in because it's none of your business. Don't ask me how much I make because it's none of your business. Well, what about for financing? I haven't told you if I'm going to pay directly in cash or finance. So don't give any information that you don't necessarily have to give because every piece of information you give is something that you're going to lose in terms of um, haggling for a car. And if you don't mind paying an extra few thousand, then I suppose it's not a bad idea. But, you know, when it comes to buying a car, you could save thousands of dollars if you're actually truly informed. Simple as that. You know, when you hear stuff about rust proofing and stuff like that, pff, extended, pff, and, and, and I think that's garbage, but some people are going to say that's pretty useful. Personally, I think it's just a way to get money out of your pocket. So I have a very um, standoffish nature when it comes to buying a car because I have a very standoff nature when it comes to people trying to rip me off, you know, and then call it, you know, and call it good salesmanship. I, I call that being a crook, but that's my personal opinion there. You know, if, if you're gonna if you're gonna treat me like a human being and make sure that I don't suffer and you know try to save me as much money as possible, then you know you're not you're not you're not being a crook. But if you are, then you know, then I have to be abrasive too when it comes to that. Uh, that's a long tangent for them doing that, but that's a good perspective when it comes to buying a car. And I mean you have to be informed. Not, not five minutes informed, I mean truly informed. So we're going to talk about this decay model. I'm going to go ahead and plug this example in or substitute these values in. So y is going to be the value that it's worth after five years. Now, 50% depreciation model, uh, depreciation for every year is extreme. It's not going to be 50% depreciation, but I would promise you, for the most part, that's going to be anywhere from 15 to 35% that first year, and then generally the depreciation factor slows. But we're just trying to graph an exponential function, and I'm trying to make the values easy so I can calculate them in my head. But it's not actually 50% every year. I should probably say that, depending. Uh, some models depreciate slower than others. Basically, if somebody wants your car, uh, if somebody wants your type of used car, it's going to depreciate slower. But if your car is a lemon in five years, basically it doesn't run, nobody's really going to want it. So when it comes to buying a car, you should consider that too. Are you going to, are you going to sell the car after a few years, or are you going to drive it until it's completely whatever? And that's, that's uh, decision making that you have to do too. And it takes time to make those informative decisions. So my A value is the initial amount that the car is worth. And I use 20000 because it seems like a relatively, you know, decent number. It's on the border of mid-range versus starting to get into nice cars. If you want a, a pretty decent car with resale value, with a tax title license, all that good stuff, maybe a V6 engine, $20,000, and if it's a good, reliable name. I'm sure you could get it for cheaper, actually, if you want to. So the rate is 
to the power of t. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to work at this for over five years. Now, same thing with percent. You want to turn the percent into a decimal. So if you want to turn a percent into a decimal, you've got to divide by 100. So I'm going to go ahead and rewrite this. And 50% divided by 100 is 0.5. All to the power of 5. Now, that's my growth, well, that's my growth rate, 0.5, excuse me, my decay rate, 0.5. That's my uh, time period, 5 years. My initial amount. One subtract 0.5 is 0.5. And that 0.5 now is my decay factor. It's whatever this number is, subtract this number. I go ahead and I substitute this really quickly into my head, 0.5 to the fifth power. You know, to be honest, I really don't know what 0.5 to the fifth power is. I don't. But I do know what the answer is, because I know that it's depreciating 50% a year, so I know it goes down to... So I'm going to do... You probably should do 0.5 to the fifth and then multiply it by 20,000. I can't actually do that. I, I know the answer because I can do it in my head. I can do 50% of 20,000 for five years, so it comes up to 10,000, 5,000, 625. So that beautiful car after five years, let me just make sure, 10,000, 5,000, 2,500, 1,250, 625 is worth $625. So if your car depreciates 50% per year for five years, that $20,000 car that you're paying insurance on, that you might even still be making payments on, and this is an extreme case though, 50% is an extreme case, it's going to be worth $625 after five years. Like I said, I don't know any car company that depreciates at 50%, but you should do your research on that because some car companies will actually depreciate at a lower value. For instance, um, if, if I said buy, see, I don't know if I want to talk about this, uh, I'll let you decide. Uh, I want to buy a, um, a Toyota Camry or I want to buy a Ford Escort. Now, I'm going to let you make the decision. Maybe you're going to like the Ford, maybe you're, not, maybe you're going to like the Toyota. But there's going to be a group of people that would prefer one car over the other. And who knows which one it is. I mean, you've got to use your idea of which one you think more people would want than the other. That, the, the, the car that people want is going to depreciate less, and the car that people don't want is going to depreciate more. So that's my example. I'm going to go ahead and do a graph, too. Um, but I'll see you at that point. I hope that helped in terms of exponential decay. But for now, have a great day.